Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at installing the control stick assembly and then installing control cables. We've installed the control cables for the elevator, the elevator trim, um, the flaps, and the rudder pedals. So stick around and we'll show you in more detail. Okay, so we started with installing the control stick assembly. This was done by first bolting the control stick in place. Then the control stick connecting tube attached to the bottom of both control sticks. Next, we push the bearings into the elevator bell crank. The control stick assembly attaches to the elevator bell crank with two rod end bearings and a connecting push rod. All of these little pieces came with the kit. The builder's manual instructed us to make sure the aileron cables are as closely aligned as possible with the pulleys on the fuselage. So we lined up the control stick assembly in this manner before drilling the holes in the mounting tabs. Next, we attach the turnbuckles to the bell crank. The end that attaches to the bell crank is bushed out to the size of an A and 3 bolt. The turnbuckle ends are narrower than the opening in the bell crank, so I used washers for spacers. The bell crank uses a bolt as an axle. Then, rod end bearings connect the bell crank to the control stick assembly with a connecting tube. Next, we installed the fair leads. The ones I received with the hardware package come in two pieces, and then a circle clip holds them together as well as keeps them from sliding back out. After the fair leads were in place, I installed the pulleys on the belly that the elevator and flap cables use. Next, we used mason line to roughly measure the length of the elevator control cables. To cut the cables, we wrapped them with tape where the cut needed to be made and then used a cold chisel to make the cut. To create the eyes at the end of the cables, we used NicroPress sleeves and thimbles. We'd start by sliding the sleeve on and looping the cable back through the second hole in the sleeve. Then we frequently used a cable clamp to hold everything in place so it wouldn't move before making the first crimp. Next, we put the thimble in place, leaving a little slack since the sleeve will grow a little as it's compressed. When everything was lined up perfectly, we'd make a crimp in the center of the sleeve. The second crimp is then made closest to the thimble, and the third and final crimp is made at the tail end. We'd check every crimp with the go-no-go -go gauge that came with the crimping tool. For the elevator control cables, we made the NicroPress swedges on the tail ends and put them in place first. Then we attached the front end. On this end, I set the turnbuckles with about five threads showing and rigged them up hand tight, holding the position with a cable clamp and then crimping them. I haven't tensioned the cables to the final value yet, but I'm hoping this method will leave the turnbuckles in the middle of their range once the cables are tensioned. Next, we rigged the rudder cables. These attach to shackles on both ends and don't require a turnbuckle if you don't want them. 
I started by attaching the ends for the rudder. The kit comes with a couple of metal extension straps that attach to the rudder pedal arms. A shackle then attaches to the aft end of these straps. Then I temporarily rig the rudder control cables to the shackles. Next, I secured the rudder and trail and clamped the left and right rudder pedals in line. Afterwards, I set the angle of the rudder pedals to match the drawing in the plans. With everything positioned and the cables on both sides tensioned equally hand tight, I crimped the Nycopress sleeves. Any of the cables that were crimped with a longer than desired tail, we used a little cutoff wheel and a dremel to trim them to length. Next, I cut a spring to the desired length and attached it to the tab welded on the fuselage and the front end of the metal extension strap on the rudder arms. After the rudder cables were in place, we took note of where the cables will penetrate the fabric in the tail. We did this using a straight edge to see where the cables intersect the plane of the fabric and measuring in the XY direction from benchmarks, and then writing this information down. I'm told this will be important information down the road. Next up was the elevator trim cable. First, we marked and drilled where we wanted the cable to penetrate the former or bulkhead at the back end of the skylight area. One important consideration is an aileron cable will pass through this area, so you need to make sure they won't be in the same plane. Not that kind of plane, Teal. We used a fair lead at this location. I cut a short piece of aluminum tubing to support the fair lead and act as a spacer between the bulkhead and the fair lead clip. At the front, the trim cable is attached to a small length of roller chain. We rigged it up with some cable clamps to figure out how long this chain needed to be to allow the full range of motion without running into the first fair lead or running out of links for the sprocket. We then marked and cut the chain. Dash 3 thimbles are slightly too wide to fit through a number 25 roller chain, so we compressed the thimbles a little bit with a vise so they would slide onto the chain. Then we crimped one end of the trim cable to the chain. This is 16th inch cable and the Nycopress crimpers I have only require one crimp for sleeves this size. We're using one turnbuckle for the trim system since it's a closed loop and I installed it in the cabin between the first two fair leads. To finish up the trim cables where they attach to the trim horns in the tail, I crimped them once the cables were hand tight. The last thing we did was run the flap control cables. Some of the pulleys inside the fuselage need cable retainers. We made these by forming 032 aluminum straps around a piece of wood the same thickness as the pulleys. Then I marked where to drill the holes and drilled both holes at once. After the cable retainers were made, we installed the four upper pulleys for the flaps. Many people make these cable retainers so they can't rotate even if the nut on the pulley were to loosen. We have not done that and we're relying on the tension to keep the retainer from rotating. I think this is fine for flap cable pulleys, but is something I might revisit on a later date. 
The main flap cable hooks to the flap lever with a shackle. Then the cable runs back behind the cargo bulkhead where the cable forks. I'm told that it's important to keep this junction as low as possible to ensure that you can get full flap deflection. With the flap lever in its maximum deflection notch, I used a cable clamp to position the cable eye as low as I could reasonably get it. From this point, the flap cable is attached to a triangle with a shackle. The other two corners of the triangle get a turnbuckle. Then the cable goes towards each wing root area where they will attach to the flap actuation arms. I've left them long and will finish them once the wings are on. All right guys, that's all I got for this one. I hope to keep making progress, but the weather's starting to warm up here in Nebraska. And my dad told me the other day that he thought building a plane was more of a wintertime project. So I'm guessing he's got a few ranch projects that he's wanting help with. But we'll do our best to keep working on both and make some progress on the Bearhawk. So we'll see you guys in the next one.